Today I've got nine Valentine Day DIYs and some bonus tips and tricks. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back y'all. Today we're going to be using some ribbon. I'm going to use a variety. I like wired ribbon for these bows. So I've got a couple here from Dollar Tree and the thrift store and it's just a piece of scrap. Here's the sign we're going to use. You're going to need some greenery, whatever you choose. And we're going to use some roses or flowers of your choice in a few different sizes. You can use the wonderful ones they have at Dollar Tree or you can use thrifted ones like I'm using. And you know, I always show you a variety of stuff. Some of this I might not use, some of it I will use, and then we'll be adding to it. So we're gonna use this 14 inch square wire wreath from Dollar Tree and I've just wrapped that with burlap. This is one I've used for many different projects in the past. We're gonna go ahead and remove the hanger and tag from the sign and figure out where we wanna put it. So we could do it in the center or we could do it off to the side. And I think since love is the font is going this way, we're going to go ahead and put it a little bit to the side. And I'm going to start arranging my flowers. Now, I intentionally put this wreath almost upside down so that the concave part is where the flowers are, so that it kind of sits in that little nook. And I think this will work, something like this. So you can just take a stem or some wire, whatever you choose to attach this. I left this part in here because the these are not strong enough to poke through the burlap. So what I have decided to do is cut pieces off of a floral pick that I already had, that I'd already used. These work really good for this. So we're gonna make a little horseshoe shape and then they will go right through that burlap to the back and then you can twist those clothes almost like a bread tie you could twist a bread tie so you twist it and then just press it down on the back so that it's laying flat just like that you're going to go ahead and start adding your layers i like the greenery in the back two different size flowers here and a little more greenery in between this is some really pretty boxwood that i got from goodwill I think it's appropriate for something going, you know, close to springtime because it's some a little bit of light green on there with the dark green, almost as if it is starting to open up and starting to grow. So you see how it's sitting down in that little that little area works perfect. And you're just gonna keep layering down here. And I'm gonna even up my stems, get those out of the way, because we don't want those showing. And in order to keep the stems from showing all together, we're gonna flip one of these around and then put a little glue on there and stick it down. Or you can use another one of those wires if you like. So I'm looking at my arrangement from all angles, like I always say to do, and I'm gonna add a little here and there until I get it the way I want. And to me, it looks like a little bouquet on the side, which is fitting. Flowers for Valentine's Day, right? All right, so this is how I wanted to do my heart. Again, I'm making sure I get it where I want it. Then I'm going to add some of these fuzzy stems on the back with some hot glue and a little scrap of paper. This is going to give it a little hanger so that it can easily be removed and I can use this wreath again for another project if I want to. Kind of eyeballed it to see where I need my next attacher and right there is going to be the spot. You can get your glue sticks pretty much anywhere you want. Right now, I have a pack of Gorilla Glue sticks that I got from the thrift store, so that's what I'm going through right now. And I'm pleased with them. They work really well. 
but the cheaper ones also do a fine job. No problem. You can definitely get them from Dollar Tree in the crafter section if you like. Keep your spending down. Now we're just going to poke those through. They're not the easiest. Like I said before, it was kind of difficult to do the flowers, but just keep working with it and it'll go through here. Or you can use floral wire if you want to. That might be better. So I'm going to take this bow maker that I made and I'm going to start making my bow. In the beginning, I had three different uh, ribbons that I was going to use, but I decided in the end to leave off the ribbon that, that did not have wire in it. It's just floppy, and for a bow this size, it didn't look very neat, so we're going to just leave that off. Now these loops are about 5 inches, which would make it a 10 inch bow. But you can make yours as big or as small as you would like. You're going to have to twist in the middle to keep your pattern side on the top because that's the side you want to show so that's what I've done here you can see I'm pinching that putting it down there and then making sure that my loops are the same twisting it in the middle I'll leave the video in a card for you so you can see how to make your own bow maker if you would like to go watch that after this video So I have two loops on each side and I have a short tail underneath and this other tail on the top. Now I'm going to layer with a bow that's going to be an inch smaller. Each loop will be an inch smaller so then I'm, this would be approximately eight inches and I'm going to do two layers. And since this is not printed it's the same on both sides. It's much easier to do. You just keep putting it through there. You don't have to twist anything. Then we're going to cut that tail off and there you have it then to take your tie and look i used a piece of cord and broke it so i had to get my stem and wrap it around there doesn't really matter what color you use because you won't see it so if you got leftovers from christmas you can use that i'm going to dovetail my ends to give it a nice little finished look you know how to do that Cut from the outside upward and then twist it and make sure that you get your the printed side upward you don't want to see the back of that you want to see the front and then you can start fluffing out your bow and it's going to go right off to the side there I'm going to take that stem and just that wire and just go right through that corner piece of burlap twist it on and poke it through the back again no glue on there means that we can use this wreath again the form again for other things so i'm just cupping under the edges to give a little more volume and there's our pretty bow i'm going to make this bow extend a little bit or appear to be extended by making some tails to put in the opposite bottom corner. I'm going to show you how you do that. We're going to take a piece of that white and red, and then we're going to take another piece of the burlap as well. That's about 12 inches, maybe 14 inches. Dovetail your ends. It's just easier before you get started if you want to do that. If not, you can attach it and then do it. All I'm doing is putting those, layering those with the darker color on top, the burlap on the top. So I'm going to show you how that you just pinch that right in the center, just folded it over to make sure it's actually the center, and then bend it in half. That keeps both of the pretty sides upward. That's what you want to do. Same thing here. Fold it over. Walk your fingers toward each other, pinching it in the middle, and then kind of pressing downward. Layer those up. Going to get a piece of floral wire or a piece of um, the chenille stem like this. And you're just going to pinch it 
and then twist it so that you secure it in the middle. This is going to attach those two layers together and give you a little something to put a dot of glue on so you can put it down there in the bottom. It just extends that pattern through the wreath. So see here on the end, you just put it there on the bottom, tuck it underneath with a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. I was running out in my glue gun, so it looks like I put a lot on there, but I didn't. And just attach that straight to those stems. So that's extending that stripe that's in the bow, that's in the wreath, that's in the uh, sign there, and on and through the end of the wreath. And I think it gives it a nice look. All right, so that large pick that you saw me have in the beginning, I'm going to cut that into little pieces and I'm going to add some of these here and there. I think it needs just a little something extra. And then I wanted to add some up here to move that floral over to the other side. Give it a little extra something. So I have a little piece of the boxwood and just a little bit of that spray of flowers there. So go back through, trim the tails if you need to, uh, curl them under, flag them out, whichever way makes you happy, and complete your wreath. And that is it. Start with some doilies. They're paper and you get a big pack from Dollar Tree. These signs also came from Dollar Tree. There are two different kinds, and I will be doing two different signs, but only one in this video, so be sure you subscribe so you can see the next one. We're going to start by saying that I was very distracted this day, and I could have removed the tag and the hanger at the same time, but my children were in the room running them up, so I did it in two different steps, but you know, not a big deal, right? Okay, so... We're going to take our doilies out. These are our paper doilies. They're the circular ones, not the hearts, but you use whatever you like. On this particular one, I wanted to use two different sizes of the circular doilies. Be sure that when you take those apart that you really get your layers undone because they will stick together and it will look like one piece and when you glue it there will be a mess so just be sure that you have one layer decide where you want to put it look at this glue stick I don't know what happened with this I've always used jot and I've never had this kind of a mess but look here I'm gonna fix it now is that the epitome of a crafting mama right there I'm making it work that's right. It'll wash off, people. All right. So we just rub that around on there, and I'm just going to pat that down. It is overhanging the edge, and that's the way I like it. That is done intentionally. Don't worry if you get a little bit that sticks out. If a very little bit of it will dry and you won't be that noticeable, but you just don't want to cover the entire surface with it. And go back under the edges that still need to be stuck down and just run that around in there and gently pat it. You don't want to necessarily drag it. You might uh, tear those little delicate edges there. This was a big pack. I, I think there were 30 in there. I think I might have already said that. But 30 in there and so this is going to be good for lots of projects. I have another video where I did a Christmas sign and I did it with antique paper doilies and that's very, very pretty. I'll try to put a link for you or put it in the cards so that you can watch that video if you'd like. Now I'm going to take my sanding block, which also came from Dollar Tree, and just gently sand down and away from the edge. That's going to make a very clean edge and make it look like it was almost painted on there. Nice and smooth. I'm going to do this to all of them. If you don't have a sanding block, you could always cut this, flip it over, and use a rotary blade. I have not found one at my Dollar Tree yet. I am on the lookout. 
All right, so we're going to use these clings. You can put them on windows or doors, and we're going to place these down on this for decoration. Now, obviously this is not going to stick to a paper surface on its own, but we have a solution for that, the glue stick. So I'm just going to take my little protective sheet here. This is actually a cutting board from Dollar Tree. And turn that upside down and then just start covering the entire surface with that glue stick. And then place it down and you're all good to go. They have a lot of really pretty decorative window clings all kinds of designs and styles so if this isn't your thing and glitter's really not my thing but you know it's valentine's day so romance is in the air we're going to do a little glitter and the bigger heart will go in the big one here and then i'm going to take the little the little section that has the writing on it and we're going to put that in the bottom corner I haven't had a problem with these bubbling or making a mess. They really lay down nice and flat. And it's uh, they're easy to kind of move around. If you don't get it in the right spot at, the, at first, you can kind of slot it just a little bit. So just go back under and glue down the rest of your edges that need to be fixed in position. So here's a simple bow. This is just a shoestring bow if you want to do something like that. But I wanted to be extra today. So I am going to make a beaded hanger. I'm going to use this piece of tape, wrap it around the end of my jute twine, which came from Dollar Tree. It came in the automotive section, I do believe, so you get a big spool of that. Then I'm going to take some of these Christmas beads that I had on my tree. I had several sections, and I have just cut it, and I'm going to repurpose it for this. So at first I was going to do just the red beads and it occurred to me, I think I have some pearl beads from Dollar Tree that will work that are the same size. And look at that. Same size and I think it looks really pretty together. So we have a red wood bead and a pearl bead and I'm just alternating. If you would like to count those, feel free to do that. I did not count those for you. I apologize. Use as many as you want to make your hanger as long as you would like. very relaxing. White and red. White and red. White and red. Okay, so we're going to tie a knot and it needs to be a knot that is thick enough that your bead will not slide back down the jute. So that's what I'm doing right now. Tying a double knot there. Move my things out of the way and do the same thing in the other end. There's a little slack in it and I am totally okay with that. See there? There we go. This is how long my hanger will be. Now this is the back side and I'm going to glue it down with some hot glue. and a little piece of fabric that I had left over. It came from a Dollar Tree sign that I have taken apart. Makes a good little band-aid for my glue. And just put one on each side. And then of course you'll want to trim that off if there's anything that is overhanging. And I love that. Oh my goodness, do you like that? Would you have just used pearls or just used the red? Or do you like the alternated ones? Because I really like them alternating like that. Okay, so we're going to take a bunch of different types of ribbon that will match. So I've got red, polka dot, red, check. I have pink check. I have solid pink. I have a, a thin metallic uh, check. A solid, a solid this, a solid that. A, you can see what I'm doing here and I'm gonna make just a little I'm gonna use bits and ends of rolls um, I think I finally finished off two rolls of ribbon that I had and there's some sheer ribbon in there as well you're just going to randomly put these down it doesn't have to be any particular order you could have just grabbed the entire stack off the table if you wanted to but I wanted to kind of play with it just a little bit so you just put them all on here make your little stack 
usually best to have bigger ribbons in the back, smaller ones toward the front because the small ones will kind of get lost in all of that bulk. And then we're just going to push them together in the center and take a piece of strong jute and give it a good double knot in the center. Double knot, three knots, whatever you do, but it needs to be more than one or you will pull it loose. So now what I'm doing is just pulling my ribbons down so that I have them fairly equal on both sides as far as length goes. And I'm going to be dovetailing my ends. You see there I flipped that red one upside down accidentally. That's okay because there's red on here so that is okay. So you're going to do this all the way around both sides on the thicker ribbons. I didn't bother doing this on the thin ribbons. You probably couldn't have seen it anyway. You wouldn't have noticed it. If you have anything that you notice that is standing out um, that it's too long, just trim it. And see here, I flipped that ribbon over a couple of times. <laughs> and then we're going to attach it up here. It's going to cover up the original hole from the hanger. We're going to put it off to the side on the sign. And I love that. I'm going to call that a scrappy bow. How about that? I think I've called it that before, but I'm not sure of the name, but for today's purposes, we're going to call this a scrappy bow because I used some scraps in there. All right, now I'm going to trim off the back because I did not do it a moment ago. Flip it back over and give it just a few more finishing touches. So for the center, I'm going to use a felt sticker that's a little heart that I got from Dollar Tree. I used a little bit of hot glue and stuck it on there. Then I decided that that pink heart would fit nicely in that white section of the red heart and since I have pink above and in the bow I thought this would carry that color down nicely and it sticks on there really good. You remember this truck. I was lucky enough to find this late in the season amongst some other things where it didn't belong. We're going to have to take a variety of ribbon. I've got some of this open weave kind of burlappy looking stuff. I've got some denim ribbon. This is unwired but it's a stiff ribbon and it's got a little garden gate seen on it. It's a little bit of a white kind of rope design ribbon here. Some of this was thrifted, some came from Dollar Tree. I got this at the thrift store and this is a little bottle of jade acrylic paint. I'm gonna take a variety of flowers and picks. Whatever type of florals you want. I wanted to do more of a spring type theme so this would transition easily. I'm taking a thrifted oval shaped, I think it's like a 14 by 16 or 18 if you can see here wreath and we're going to start by working on this truck so it's just stapled on the little tag is so you just pull that out of there we're going to pop that off and there's a staple underneath that needs to be removed so you don't poke yourself so i'm using my little pliers here to just get right next to that and clip it off if you do not sand off this glittery textured Merry Christmas it will show right through any paint you use that includes chalk paint so you need to get your sanding block this one came from Dollar Tree and go to town on it you want to try to get that as close to the surface as you can as smooth as you can when I finished I did have a little bit of texture left next to that uh, wheel over there on the S of Christmas but it's not too bad I think I pretty much covered it up you're going to sand it down and then wipe the residue off. You don't want that red and gold to bleed into anything else. So when I did this, I thought, hmm, maybe I should use a base layer of white since we're using a light color. So I went ahead and took my chalk paint and started working. Now, see, I have three hands. Look at that. That is my son. He is helping me. 
he broke his arm and he was kind of feeling down in the dumps and he wanted to do something so since he broke his left hand he's still got plenty of good use in the right one and he's helping me and I wanted to leave this in the video for him so he could see himself on YouTube so give him a thumbs up he did a good job didn't he now I'm just gonna go back over all of the sides this is kind of a dimensional item so if you have this truck you need to go over all the little nooks and crannies and get every bit of that red covered up so just pick it up look at it from different angles and be sure that you cover all the red careful not to get it on your black tires you can repaint them if you want to but you know just being a little more careful you can avoid having to do that extra step i think i got these paint brushes from goodwill but you can get these sponge brushes from dollar tree also and a little tip you might want to use the ones that come out of the automotive section because there's more in a container than what's in the crafting section so save yourself a little there all right so once i've gotten two layers of the chalk paint and let them dry completely i'm going to go back over with that jade i'm going to go over and do the same process all over i'm using a i'm not going to say a heavy hand with the paint but definitely heavier than i used with the chalk paint because it's acrylic and this is going to be hopefully one coat does it and that's what I'm going for one coat so you're just using a combination of just kind of pouncing around it adds more color um, it deposits more paint so it's thicker it's a thicker coverage so just kind of pouncing around a little bit and then rubbing it on where you need to rub it on you can see what I'm doing here And then I'm going to cover everything that I had white with the green. And I love, love, love this color. My husband came downstairs and saw what I was doing and he said that it it looked like an authentic color. It looked like a, um, you know, an old green. And I do have to agree. I think it's pretty. It's not your traditional colors, but that's okay. So I'm going to go back over with a black um, paint pen and just go over because these tires have red around the edges I couldn't get a close enough look to show you that but underneath that little tire hub there and around the edges of the tire it was red like a line of red so I wanted to get that completely off of there you could use a sharpie probably to do this if you don't have um, acrylic markers or paint pens I think it would work fine you could also use a little bit of paint this made it really really easy okay so as you can see the truck's gonna fit nicely uh, across this sign and I want to put it closer to the bottom than the top now we're gonna work on the floral section that's gonna go underneath and I've just picked some thrifted fern pieces as part of my greenery and again I don't really have a I have an idea of what I want to do but I don't have a firm plan in mind so you're gonna see me probably move some things around all right so we're using our non-traditional Valentine's colors here and I thought that the blue would be really pretty it also matches the blue in my ribbon so I have the fern the little white picks the hydrangea in the middle and then some blue on the sides there we are going to move on to work on the our pretty bow you're just going to take about seven or eight inches of that overlap it on itself really easy you can see what I'm doing step by step and then when you get two loops on each side you can go ahead and cut it off See there, two loops on each side. Then I'm going to take this ribbon, and I don't know what happened to the denim ribbon that I had planned on using. It was days in between, and I had been getting over a sickness, so I don't know where it went. So we're just gonna work without it. I'm gonna do the same thing for this pattern ribbon but I'm gonna cut notches in the sides, little bitty notches, like we're talking millimeters, just so I have something to grip onto when I start fluffing out the bow. 
So you saw me cut a little notch in one side. We're going to cut a notch in the other side. And then I'm going to wrap a piece of the jute cord around it. Pattern on top. Turn it to the back. Squeeze it tightly with our jute. And then hold it in place and tie another knot or two in there to hold it nicely together because we're going to do a lot of tugging on this bow to fluff it out. So you're going to pull the insides out and away from each other starting on the bottom and you're going to do the same thing on the top. Now the good thing about the notches in there is that it will help you pull those pieces apart and they will stand up a little bit better. It'll give them more, um, I kind of want to say freedom to move around. So there you go. And see nobody's bow looks good in the beginning. You just have to play with it. You just have to keep moving it around, see where you want it, see how far you want to fluff it, how flat you want it, how thick you want it. And then I wanted to go ahead and put a middle on here. The jute is fine without it, but I decided to go ahead and put a strip around the middle. So I just took a little length of that and I'm gluing it down and then I'm going to trim off the extra so that you don't see it. And I think that makes it a little pretty bow. It's rustic, that's what we have in my house, and so I think it fits great into the decor. Kind of farmhouse and rustic. Also maybe a little bit on the French farmhouse side, if you will. Now we're gonna make the tails. I'm gonna cut off, at the end of the spool, there's like a little, a dimple or a little, I don't know, unnatural looking edge, but we wanna cut that off because I want the ends of these bows, these tails to be curly. So I don't want anything to interfere with the pattern, with the direction that they're rolling in, the direction of the curl, if that makes sense. Probably didn't, but it did in my head, I promise. We're going to take some of the burlap and some of the pattern, put the pattern on the top. We're gonna to pinch them together, place them on the back of the bow, and that piece of jute that we had left, we're just gonna tie it very tightly on the back. So now our bow, has tails. Still gonna look a little bit silly at first, but you'll see. You'll see what's happening in a minute. Okay. Now you put yours in the center if you'd like. You can put yours to the side if you would like. On either side, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna thread this pipe cleaner through my jute here and then use this to attach it to the wreath. Now, if you don't want your jute to your uh, pipe cleaner to show, you need to put it through the inner surface, not around the outside diameter of the wreath. So just kind of feed it through the vines there. This may be a grapevine wreath. I think that's what this is called. So you see what I did there? And then you're just gonna pull it to the back. And kind of give it a nice tug to make it secure and then twist it and just tuck that back inside. No one is going to see this. This is not the type of wreath that you would hang on a glass door because you'll see all your hardware and you don't you don't want to see all that. This is the type that you would want to put on a wooden door or hang on your wall. One-sided. So I'm not going to glue my truck because I can just tuck it right in amongst the wreath, right in the vines, and it stays nice and secure just like that. And that way I can use that truck again for another project. I felt like it needed a little more something, so I've taken this other thrifted pick and I am just going to kind of place it amongst the fern there, put it in the back of the fern and then twisted the pieces together. Like you would see it in nature, it all grows together, right? It all grows together in the woods, in the forest. They live happily together. And I'm gonna add a couple more blue here. Just because I had them, I went ahead and added them. And I'm loving the combination here. Blue is my favorite color, green is my husband's favorite color. And I think this just is just gorgeous. It just fits my style beautifully. So, dovetailing my ends. And then they don't look very curly, but they will curl. And I'll show you that shortly, so stick around. So 
So I'm just adding a little bit to the bow here. I thought I wanted to bring a little of the florals up to the top. Have a little more going on up there. And so I've chosen three of those different picks to put up there on top and tuck them behind the bow. If you don't look for florals and ribbon at the thrift store, you really, really should. That's where I got this, this little uh, garden looking ribbon there. That's where I got that and most of these gorgeous picks because I'm not gonna spend a ton of money at the store's full price on anything. I'm just not going to do it. So I've got some stickers from my old scrapbook days and I've just chosen a very simple love sticker. Use whatever you like. If you want a freehand, you can freehand. If you got a Cricut, you can put something on there. You do whatever you like. You don't have to put anything on there at all if you don't want to. But I think this is simple and it is pretty. I think I've said pretty about a thousand times already. Okay, metal ruler underneath, put your thumb on it and pull out on that ribbon and it's going to curl just like you use the little curling ribbons at Christmas time for packages. I don't think people do that anymore, but they used to. And it will curl that thick papery ribbon. Isn't that great? But if you're on the bottom of a spool, then you'll be able to do this with yours too. What do you think? I'm loving it. I'm loving the non-traditional, just a hint of Valentine's in this. Welcome back, y'all. We're going to use some items from the Dollar Tree. This was a fall sign, the little pumpkins. It had a stake. I pulled it off. These are some felt sticker hearts. And then we have a sign here that is just a fabric sign. So we're gonna cover up this farm fresh pumpkins on the tailgate. I'm just gonna take a little quick measurement here. Just showing you, be sure that you measure it. Obviously my ruler was not in the correct spot. And then I wanna use the word love off of the sign. So I am going to cut this section off. I'm going to use the rest of the sign for other projects. So don't throw it away. All right, I'm trying to make a straight line here cut this out so that we can fit it on the tailgate of that truck. Just gonna trim it down and don't be worried if you cut off the little the little um, stitching thing there because you can fix that. I'm gonna fix mine. And I'm just trying to decide, did I want to leave the red on? Did I want to trim off the red? But in order to get it to fit in that tailgate area, I went ahead and trimmed that down. So there we go, we have a new tailgate. Now I'm going to take this glass marker pen that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love by the way, very good quality, and just go ahead and put the stitching back on this sign. I didn't measure it, I just kind of freehanded it. Didn't count or anything, just, you know. It's a craft. We don't have to be exact. Now you can't even tell. So now I'm going to put something in the back of that truck to cover up all of those pumpkins. And these hearts are great. I decided to just go with the red and the white. And I'm going to start peeling these off and placing them down. It's okay to go ahead and overlap the little tailgate area there because you want it to look like they're sitting in the back of the truck, not floating above it but you do what you want to do. Just gonna go along there and add them on. And one thing you should know about the white ones is that once you take the backing off, they're pretty sheer, pretty thin. So you may want to double up on those stickers so that you don't see what's underneath it. And it makes a, a bolder color, I think, when you can't see through it. You see there, I don't want to see that. So I'm just gonna double those up and they'll be fine. They'll cover up those pumpkins because I don't want to see pumpkins again until much later in the year, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep adding these and stacking and staggering these so the pumpkins are covered until I get as many on there as I want to put. I'm also going to go back, I think I lost a little footage, and add in some of the smaller hearts on top of some of the larger hearts just to give it a little more dimension. 
I love stickers. I have loved stickers since I was a little girl. Since way, way back in elementary school. I had sticker books and I had scratch and sniff and I had holographic stickers and puppy stickers. You know, if you were a kid in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to keep doing that. I'm going to put some behind, some in front. Going to do some layering there. Again, it's about giving it some dimension and so that all your little elements will stand out. Now you see where I have added some layers there. And I've got the back of my truck bed looking like I'm spreading some love. All right, the stickers are overhanging a little bit. So to keep them from sticking on everything and pulling off, I'm just gonna go back and pull some of those backings off, just some little scraps, and add those to cover that up. You can just use paper or whatever you wanna use, but this way it's not sticking on anything. Okay, so some of the felt has little fuzzies on it, and that's just what I trimmed off there. You pull off your little fuzzy pieces to make it nice and neat. And then now, I'm going to put the tailgate back on and see how it overlaps some of those. Now it makes it look like the hearts are sitting in the back of the truck. That is the look I am going for. So now I know where I'm going to put it, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of hot glue on there, some thin lines but enough to hold it in place, just in case I wanna use this truck again. Gonna center it as much as I can, just by looking at it and place it down. Now you could leave it like this if you wanted to, put a hanger on it, hang it on the wall, but I'm feeling a little extra today, so I thought I might trim it out with a little bit of jute. But honestly, once I got the jute on there, it's so thin against the thickness of the that fabric sign that it almost disappears in there. You really can barely see it. So be really careful with your glue. It makes a mess if you get it over there on those felt stickers. And that's what you saw me doing was just kind of pick that off. I got a little mess on the side. And for y'all who noticed that it was crooked there, that I didn't have a good straight edge, you're welcome. I've just fixed that for you. It would have drove me nuts, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm just gonna keep going around the entire border of this carefully so that I don't make a mess on all my pretty little hearts up there that I worked so hard on. Just keep dotting that along there. How's everybody feeling today? We good? How many of my subscribers have been sick over the holiday season and quarantine? I'd kinda like to know since we were so late in the year getting it. I mean, right before New Year's, I actually was coming out of quarantine right after New Year's. So I'm just kind of curious to know who all has been sick. And bless your heart if you have, and I mean that sincerely, not in a snooty way. I feel your pain. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna add, because I didn't like that it was just really not showing up that well. And I'm gonna add some of this yarn that came from Dollar Tree. So, so far, everything came from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make my border here with this fuzzy yarn. I'm going to start always in the corner. It seems to be better for me to start in the corner unless you're planning on embellishing um, somewhere on the sides, then you can cover your seam. But if I do it in the bottom corner, it doesn't seem quite as noticeable. So as I'm pulling this along and placing it down, I'm trying to keep the twist in it so that it doesn't go flat. I'm trying to keep the texture. So you see how it's the pieces that are twisted together. I'm just trying to keep them twisted to make it look like a rope. Continue around your corner. Make sure that it is set up before you go on so you don't have rounded edges. And just tap that down right next to that jute. It's just snug right up to the jute. Again, make sure that your corner is in place. Just, let me just press that corner down good and then trim it closely to the to the edge. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to tack that down and kind of twist it together while the glue is still wet. And that'll keep my corner in place. So now I want to add a little bow on here and I'm going to double up with a little red and a little white, both of these from Dollar Tree again, and just make up a, a simple little shoelace bow. This is probably mm, 14 inches maybe of um, yarn and to see this is just a really simple bow of course i'm distracted so i didn't tuck both of them in the loop at the same time but you you get what i'm doing here 
Okay. There we go. And you can make your bow however big or small that you want to make it. I think this is good. You can place it on the bottom of the tailgate. You can place it in the middle of the top. You can put it on the side. You can trim the tails. You can leave them long. You do whatever gives you some joy. And you know how I am. For some reason, I always kind of favor the left-hand corner for my bows and my embellishments. That's just my thing for some reason. It looks good to me. So there it is, off to the side. Pretty little bow. And I think that the texture of the bow with the texture of the felt hearts is a really good combination. I'm gonna leave the backing on both of these stickers and I'm going to put a little hot glue on there, attach those together, just so it'll give them a little um, stiffness so that they don't, they wanna, I want them to stand up on the bow and not like curve down and disappear into that bow. Now I'm going to put a red one and a white one, the smallest sizes, in the right corner of the tailgate. Felt like it needed something to balance the other side. And at this point, if you wanted to stop, you certainly could, but I don't want to hang mine. I want to make this a freestanding sign. So I'm going to use some tower pieces and some of these little square wooden pieces that come from the Dollar Tree crafting section. And I'm going to make a stand for this. Now, because the wheels are narrow and I don't want my stand to show, I'm placing these uh, rectangle pieces long ways instead of side to side. And then I'm going to support those with glue on two sides of the square and press them right up against that rectangle piece and the sign. That's gonna give it some additional support so that you can stand out on a table or a narrow shelf. Lots of people have those, um, if you have the farmhouse style, you have those narrow shelves and this will fit nicely there. So you see, I just have it propped up for uh, the camera purposes, but you can just set that up on your table or wherever you like. If you work, you can put it on your desk. It'd be a cute little reminder to just let love rule. We're going to start off with glue stick, of course. Going to take some picks of your choice. I just have some eucalyptus here that from came from the thrift store. I've got some roses and this heart pick that came from Dollar Tree. Here are some heart doilies from Dollar Tree in the Valentine section. This bag is a wedding bag, I believe, and it just came from the regular bag section in Dollar Tree. And this is a sign, Valentine sign, which looks cute enough as its own, you know, on its own, but we're going to fix it up, give you some options. So first off, we're going to choose which side of the bag that we want, and it's usually easier to do the side, in my opinion, that is flat and doesn't have the bend in it. So I'm just trying to take the bag apart a little bit. This doesn't matter if it tears. I just want to have a little bit easier access to cut a bigger opening. So I'm going to lay this out flat and trim out the section that I want to use. If you want to leave the sides on there to carry it all the way across, you can since there's a print on it, but I didn't want to do it that way. I've got another plan for that. So then you decide where you want to put your doilies and I am just going to put mine kind of staggered down the front of this sign. Well, it's actually the back of the sign and I think I will put my bag picture right there in the center or close to the center okay more problems with the glue stick it's coming out really goopy I don't know what's going on but that's okay it, it's easy to wash off so I'll just use my hands where I need to to be a messy crafter now rather than going all over the board I just want to make sure that I have enough to stick down and then I want to Put it down to hold it and then go around the edges just lift up where it's not stuck down and just add your glue around those edges that way you don't have a big mess on the outside there we go and then we're going to just do this down the front be sure that 
you make sure that your layers are thin, that you just have one layer and you're not picking up two. I have mine arranged so that they hang over the sides and I'll be removing that excess. So I have my trusty sanding block that was sent to me by one of my viewers. And I am going to just gently trim this off. I sped it up a little bit. Okay, if you have any pieces sticking up, just press them gently back down. Because you still have that glue on there and it's still a little bit damp. Find the placement of your bag. Go ahead and add your glue all over the back of your bag, all the way down, especially to the corners and edges. And then place that down. When I placed mine down, I did not place it on there exactly centered. That's okay, that won't be an issue because I'm going to use a border around there. So it'll be all right. Don't discourage if you make little boo-boos along the way. With crafting, you can usually fix anything. And sometimes they end up being the happiest of mistakes. All right, I've got some rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use my pliers to cut it because it's very thick. And I'm gonna make a border around here. This is gonna give it some dimension. It's gonna look 3D and it's going to act as a frame. So to keep it from unraveling, I've just put a little glue on the edge and then twisted it to make those strands stay together. If it's crooked, just go ahead and make your straight line. The thickness of this rope will allow you to overlap slightly onto that picture to give you a nice even edge if you need to do that. Be sure you put glue in that corner and hold that down for a minute so that it doesn't come loose and it will keep its shape for you. You don't want to pull, you just want to guide it and lay it down. Don't pull it. And you're just going to continue that all the way around. I think this gives it a very nice rustic look and then the wood grain of the bag also does the same. Plus you have the romance of the little lacy doilies in the background. I just think it's really pretty and fitting for a farmhouse rustic decor. Just removing the spider webs from the glue. And then I'm using my little bull nose pliers here to cut it and then trim it with the scissors. Add a little glue there, twist it and push it down and keep it from fraying. Now I'm just going to take this oak marker, this is a furniture marker, and just dot in the white that's under there because it was really standing out to me. Now it just looks like the background. We're going to make a little pocket on the bottom. It's only stuck on the sides, so you're going to wrap it around the back and then place it on the sides. Just a little line of glue there. So you have an open top and an open bottom. And I'm going to make a little bouquet to put on the bottom and it'll be removable. So I'm going to cut off a few of these heart picks and some of the roses. These are such a pretty color. They're a very pale peachy pink, I think. Really good quality for Dollar Tree. I don't care for the foliage that's on there, but you know, for what we pay at Dollar Tree, you really can't complain. We're going to hide most of that greenery anyway. So now just start making your little bouquet in your hand just like you would a regular bouquet. I'm going to tuck in my greenery. Greenery. I'm, <laughs> the word is greenery. Yeah, I'm going to put the green stuff amongst the staggered roses. we got different heights there just because I put them in my hand that way. And then you can put your pick in at this point or you can wait. I'm going to take a little bit of green Chanel stem, wrap that around the bottom, and then I'm going to take a little bit of the burlap ribbon, there it is, and wrap that around. So when it's removed, if you decide you want to remove it, it looks nice, finished, and neat. 
Plus, if you use the burlap here, it helps give it a little grip on the other piece of burlap ribbon, which by the way, those pieces came off of a roll from Dollar Tree. You can decide which side you want to put your arrangement on. Since I usually go to the left side, I decided to put it on the right side this time. And see, it holds it nicely. No problem. You have the freedom to move it around. It's not going to fall out. Now we're going to make a bow. These strips of ribbon are about two inches shorter than the one before it. So this is going to be a stacked bow. I'm going to put the largest layer on the bottom, then the next layer on top of that, and the next layer on top of that. Stack them. We're going to make a little loop to go in the center. So we're just going to take a short section, make a little loop. Watch your fingers. Glue goes right through this and it is hot. Thus the name hot glue. Okay, so we're gonna put that right in the center. Take a piece of jute cord or whatever you have because you won't be able to see it. Twist it onto the back, pinch it in the center and give it a good couple of knots. It's gonna hold it in place. So I'm folding it there just to make sure before I secure it down that my sides are equal. That's all I was doing with that. So now I'm just playing around with the bow and the wire in here helps it hold its shape. So that's, that's really great with this wire. I mean, with this ribbon rather. Looks like somebody needs more coffee this morning. Can't speak. All right, so we're gonna make the tails now by just cutting another length. That's about a 10 inch strip of ribbon, pinching it in the middle, folding it down. I'm going to dovetail it glue it on the back in the center of that bow, right where you tied it. Hold it for a minute or two. I edited that out. Be sure that you hold it in place, let the glue get cool, and then it'll stick. All right, so here I go with a, a heart, and I'm going to place this down in the little bouquet bundle. You can use one of these, you can use two of these, you can put them wherever you want. After Valentine's, you can easily remove those picks out of there. They're not glued in. I'm going to take one of these rosebuds and a little piece of this eucalyptus and add it right to the top. A little bit of hot glue will hold it to the back of that bow. Nicely. Flip it over. You're going to make a little jute hanger. This is the way I do most of them. And I did not protect my fingers. And I should have, so you protect yours. So now we have our little hanger and it'll be underneath where that is, where that flower is. What do you think? I think it's very pretty and I'm liking the peachy colors for Valentine's Day, I think a little bit better than the, I don't really care for the fuchsia and the really bright stuff. So you'll probably see a little bit of pink in what we're doing here on my channel. We're gonna use brown decorative shred, some heart grapevine decoration pieces, ribbon from Dollar Tree or the thrift store, whichever you prefer, whatever you have on hand. A calendar page from the Dollar Tree and this is a frame that I got from Goodwill I did not pay $9.99 for it it was originally from the at-home store I paid by the pound so I probably paid maybe two dollars for this they are this is a 16 inch square decorative piece it's a wall hanging whatever you want to call it Originally when I bought it, I thought maybe it was a picture frame, but because it has the clips on there, but it is not. The back is sealed, as you will see shortly. So a little goo gone is going to take this red marker off of here. Also go back over with some alcohol or some glass spray and clean your glass up on both sides. 
going to cut away the paper backing. I'm just trying to clean up the edges a little bit. Then I'm taking my metal ruler from the Dollar Tree and bending up those little prongs that hold the backing in place. After I do that, I use some pliers to pull those out. And this is what it looks like underneath. It's got a little bin there, but that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to remove these. They are not stuck down on the frame itself, so that's a good thing. You use some of this white chalk paint. It's linen white. Shake, shake, shake. And my little Dollar Tree brush. And I am going to go over this entire thing. I just give it one thick coat and then put it in front of the fan to dry for a little while. Needs to be dry to touch because once you put the glue stick on there on top of wet paint, it is going to make a mess. So be sure that it is completely dry. Get around your edges too if your frame happens to have, um, you know, some painted edges there. Just going around there just a little bit and then using my finger to take off anything so it doesn't drip on the backing. These are not all created equal. Some of these look like perfect heart shape and one of those looks kind of flat on top. So I just picked the best three or the best two that I liked. This is what that shred looks like. You can use any color you like that coordinates. This is such a pretty ribbon. I'm going to make a simple shoe string bow here. And it is going to have two layers. So I'm going to use one of this one, the stripe, and then one of the gingham. Just got to kind of play around with it. Usually the bows turn out perfectly, but for some reason I got it twisted on one side. So I just keep fiddling with it until it's perfect. And then I want to dovetail my ends, which I should have been wearing my glasses because I was a little confused there. And this is not wired. The gingham ribbon is wired, but it's pretty thick. It's a good quality. It originally, I think, came from uh, Target. So it's a nice thick ribbon. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other ribbon. This ribbon is probably, I would probably say like a medium size because I want it to be something that doesn't completely bulk up the inside of the frame because it's going to be pushing against the glass if it gets too thick and too big. So I thought that this type of bow would be the perfect, the perfect solution for that. And so I'm just showing you here how you can double up a thin ribbon and cut two dovetails at one. Save your time. So now we are going to combine these together. The colors look really nice together, I think. Take this glue stick, use whatever kind you want. I happen to have got these on a very steep clearance. And the calendar page is too big, as you almost saw in that clip. Um, it's too big, but that's not a problem because we are going to sand it down. Now, if you want to cut, you have a cutting board, a steady hand, you could cut it. But I'm going to do the same thing I always do, and that is going to be to sand my edges. It's a little bit different because I have to be careful about the backing that is just below that. But there is a way around it. I'm using my wooden side of my wooden ruler to press down and to get the, butt, the wrinkles or little bubbles or anything like that out from under there. So I'm just using a piece of heavy cardstock to go under the edge and to keep that sanding block from bumping against my the backing there that's underneath. It's a little bit different than what I usually do. I had to turn it sideways, but that's okay. It works just as well. And it takes a little bit of the gray paint or the gray ink off of the page, which gives it a white kind of aged look, which I like with my decor. You're gonna do this kind of gently all the way around and just pulling off where it's coming off. All right, and so this is how it is going to look. 
I'm going to attach these two bows together with a little piece in the middle. You can use whichever one you want, but I'm going to use the color of the top bow to do my center. This is going to bind those together, make them look like one bow. Whatever calendar page you use, that's what you want to match your ribbons to. But I think that this one is really pretty. I've made it for Valentine's Day, but it could certainly be used all year round if you wanted to. This bow is going to go right in the center top of that calendar page. All right, so now to decide where we want the hearts to go. Play around with it a little bit, see what you like, see where you like it. I'm also looking to see if I would like some type of a bow with a thicker ribbon on it, or if I want to use something thinner. Just kind of playing around to try to get an idea of what I want to do. So I picked two hearts that are almost... Okay, so now I'm just going to get an idea of how this is going to look with the bow on and how much room I have left in here. And I have plenty of clearance for my bow, but the ends need to be tacked down. So just a dot, the smallest amount of hot glue so that it doesn't show through the ribbon um, as an obvious darker spot. And like I said, with this thicker ribbon, it's going to kind of stay in place for me. It's not going to flop downwards once we get the frame back on it. I am going to make some little bows to go on my parts. And this is going to be a shoestring bow just like the other. Really easy. First time I did it, I pulled too much through, so I'm doing it again. That's all you have to do. Pull them down to make your little loops even there. Get your strings as long as you want them to be. I want to even mine up, make them the same size. And then a little bit, little bitty bit of hot glue. We'll hold those bows right down to those little wooden heart wreaths. Wreath, would you call it a wreath? It's like a tiny heart wreath. Find your placement, little bit of glue and put those down where you want them. I'll put this one on. Didn't have it exactly where I wanted it. I didn't have the flat side down. They're usually kind of bowed on one side. This one was, so I had to scoot it around a little. Then I'm going to take my shred paper and put that right around the bottom. Just tuck it in there. You can put as much or as little as you like. I didn't want a whole bunch. Now I'm testing it. Y'all excuse my lights reflecting there in the glass. There's nothing really I can do about it. And to put that back on, I'm just going to use some strips of foam board from Dollar Tree. Cut them in rectangles. And then for each corner. And then I'm going to use hot glue on the side of each piece that where it touches. So on the long side and the short side of each one to hold it to the frame itself. You can use popsicle, stick, popsicle sticks across the corners if you want to, to make like a triangle shape to hold it in there. You can do whatever you like to make sure that this fits back down. You can even glue the inside surface back to the risers that are in there, but I don't want to do that. I want to easily be able to reuse this if I choose to reuse it. And this is how it's looking. I'm very happy with this. It's much better than I could have ever anticipated. Such a pretty little sign. And you can do this for any holiday, really. Any calendar page you choose. And Dollar Tree has the best calendar pages. All right, we're going to start with some picks that came from Dollar Tree, some roses, some hearts, whatever you like. I'm going to take a variety of ribbons, some I may use, some I may not. The wired ones are the ones that I prefer. This bag came from the regular bag section at Dollar Tree. I think it's a wedding bag. 
Yep, looks like it. Very pretty. And I'm going to repurpose this Christmas sign that I made. I'm going to start by removing the embellishment from the frame. We can recycle that for another project or add it to the thrift bag. And I'm just going to gently pop out the foam board frame uh, backing. Now I'm going to clean up the back of the frame a little bit, get some of the stuff off of it because I don't want the bulk of that glue to hold it away from the backing. So I'm going to clean that off. And I'm going to take this bag off. The bag also came from Dollar Tree. It was a Christmas project that I did. I'm just going to pull all that off and we are going to use the back of this again. I usually use a um, glue stick, but I'm going to use hot glue today to put this on here. So you're going to start by removing your uh, hangers there, your um, I don't know, the totes, whatever you want to call it, the ribbon. You're going to take that off, open up your bag, and lay it out. I think my frame is a 16 by 20. It was a canvas that I took off and used the frame. And then lay it down, get an idea of exactly how I want this to fit. And I like it like that. I like the coloring of the frame, the natural color, so I will not be painting it for this project. Now, where I get it exactly where I want it, I'm just going to hold it down with my hand and start adding my hot glue by just flipping up a little bit at a time so that it is still centered exactly where I want it on that backing. Go all the way around the edges, top, bottom, and each side to make sure that it lays flat. Be sure that you are not making any... I don't know, lines, creases, or bubbles when you're gluing it down. You don't want to have a bunch of mess in there. You want it to be relatively flat. Just like that. So there's an idea of how it's going to look once we get it in the frame. I'm going to quickly add some glue just in the top two corners and then put that back down on there. You can use clamps, clips, whatever, but you need something to hold this down because it's not flat and it will bow away and you won't have um, a nice close seal. So you want to be sure you use some clips. These are clips from Dollar Tree in the laundry section. They work really good for these wider pieces. And then go ahead and go down, add and glue where you need it along the sides and the bottom corners and put clamps on those spots too. We're going to use one of the ribbon hangers or ribbon handles and make a hanger for the back. That's all you have to do right there. We're gonna get the most of our buck from this bag. So once we've got a simple little tie there, we are going to glue that on the back side. I'm just trying to get it centered here. Shows you how big that the backing is so how big the frame is and then there you go found my center for my hanger if you don't hang it in the center it might go crooked on you and then it'll be kind of crooked on the wall so just check on that before you put it on and now I'm going to start on some embellishments this is a wired burlap ribbon I think it's a two inch ribbon one and a half inch, two inch, it came from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna fold it over so that I have two loops on each side. See, count that, two loops on each side, folding it over on itself. There's no print, so we don't have to worry about that on this ribbon. I'm gonna fold it in the center, and I'm going to make sure that the, the little gingham bow that goes on top is just a little bit shorter than it is. And I'm gonna do I think I have six loops on this one, three on each side. But it's going to be a little bit smaller than the one that's underneath because we're going to stack it on top. It makes a pretty little bow that looks, reminds me of a flower, I think. You can decide. We're going to cut that off. See how it's a little smaller? 
Now find your center. And then you're just going to use your scissors to make little cuts through the wire on each side. Little bitty cuts. You don't want to cut through it because you'll cut it in half. Do the same thing here on the bigger ribbon. That's going to give the jute string that you use or your floral wire, whatever you decide to use, something to grip onto. And it makes it easier to keep your bow in one piece while you fluff it out and get the shape that you like. You can see how it sinks into those little cut spaces. That's what we want it to do. Good, tight, double knot there. And then you can begin to pull and twist your pieces, your loops, out and away from one another. Do that on both sides. So we have sort of an X in the back with the two on each side. And on the top, we have six little pieces. It's going to be so cute. It's going to be cute, y'all. Just wait. All right, we're going to make tails for the ribbon by using whatever length you like of a piece of burlap and then also the pink and white gingham to go on top of that. It's going to be layered just like the bow. You could always leave this part off if you wanted to. I think it looks wispy and romantic, so I'm going to add it. Pinch it in the center and fold it over. Same thing with this one. Pinch in the center and fold it over, and that gives our tails. We're going to turn it around, place it in the center of that burlap, about mm, half inch or inch up, and then make sure you're getting both pieces in there and tie a few knots to hold it down. Go ahead and trim off your excess, whatever you have left there. And you can start to see how this pretty bow is going to look. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need some fluffing, but we have a little more work to do. Decide if you want it in the center or on the sides. There I am with the left side again. I just like them there. Add some hot glue. And you're going to grab that bow. Place it right up there, and then you can take a clamp and hold it down. Make sure that it stays nice and flat. Very, very thin, thin line of glue on your ribbon against the frame and onto that upper ribbon to hold it in place. Once it is nice and dried up there, you can begin to fluff out your bow. And it does remind me of a little flower. Isn't that cute? It's such a simple bow. Use whatever color ribbon is going to match the bag that you choose. They have a variety of gorgeous, gorgeous bags. So don't just look in the holiday section or for Valentine's stuff. Be sure that you go to the uh, back of the store, wherever they keep their gift bags, and just see what you can find. I, I really think these are part of a wedding variety. So here are some Valentine picks, just little glittery sequined hearts. I chose white. They also have pink and red, I believe. And we're going to put that right in the middle of our flower bed. These are little pit berry pieces that I had left over from Christmas. Pretty sure you can still get them now. And I wanted to make some little flyaways with this, so I'm just going to take my pencil and twist this around and make a little curly doodad. And I, now I have two of them, so I'm going to put one on the top, right under the bow in the glue. And I've added some hot glue to that. I'm going to add a little hot glue on this one and tuck right under the bottom part. I think this is just too cute. I love this bow. It's got to be one of my favorites. And there you go. We're going to use this little canvas sign from Dollar Tree. It's got some scraps of burlap, 
you know, I always pick up things that I might use and I might not use. So got little bits of this and that all over. Got some thrifted ribbon and some Dollar Tree ribbon. A little bit of Christmas mesh. And this is a wire wreath form that I got from Dollar Tree and I've just wrapped it with burlap. I've used this over and over again so you can see the, the glue on there. That won't matter, it's gonna be covered. This is a 14 inch wreath, as you can see here. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make these little mesh ruffles. And they're really just tubes. We're going to use 10 inch pieces and we're going to roll them up. Rolling, rolling, rolling. They're gonna be about the diameter when you get to the end of probably a quarter. You can make them tight, tighter if you'd like, whichever way you wanna do it. Just using my clips from Dollar Tree to hold those down while I get the other two pieces ready because we're gonna have three pieces in each bundle. Repeat the process, tucking and rolling. And we're gonna pinch them together. You can use any color that you like, any color you have that coordinates with the little canvas that you choose. And I did not measure that canvas, but it's pretty standard for what they have in Dollar Tree. Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. We're gonna make several of these. I'm taking these red pipe cleaners and I'm going to be cutting those in half and I'm going to start making my ribbon bundles. So you can see here, these are eight inches of ribbon. And we're going to do one for each of those little bundles. So there's three, four, five. And then we're going to do five of the blue. You can do a few more or you can do less, whichever one you want to use. This is just what I've used. They're also the same size as the red. Now I'm stacking these up and folding them over so that I can dovetail the ends all at one time. If the ribbon's not too thick and you've got good scissors, this makes your process a little bit quicker. I'm gonna do it on both sides. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these. You certainly don't have to, it's a thinner ribbon, but I wanted to do it. I think it's cute. I like the look of it. Now we're going to take this Christmas ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. I had left over for Christmas time. And we're going to be cutting the same amount. I think we had five. Then we're going to fold those over and dovetail those as well. Both ends. Then I'm going to start with my little bundle. Give it a twist or two. I'm going to start my little bundles, put them together, squeeze them together in a center, wrap that over them and twist it in the back. And they're really cute once they're all fluffed out. Now the smallest ribbon there does not have wire in it. That is not a problem, it's on top. It's small, it really doesn't need it. It'll stand up on its own. We're gonna do the same thing with the next one you can see exactly what i'm doing crossing it over and then twisting those around to the back okay now we want to find placement of our cute little canvas and find a way to attach those so instead of hot gluing it onto the frame i'm just going to use my little pipe cleaner and a little scrap of paper to make something to attach it with. You can use wire for this, you can use floral wire, you can use whatever you have for this. So pipe cleaners can sometimes be a little bit uh, limp and they are sometimes hard to feed through that burlap. Uh, it just depends. And the wider the weave on the burlap, the easier it is to get these in. So you just kind of fool around with a little bit until you can get them fed through and make sure that you are 
wrapping it around one of the wires on the inside and I'm kind of aiming for that middle wire and just feeding that through there and then this will be on the other side of the metal ring pull it tightly or I'll say that I'll pull it snugly you don't pull anything too tight I don't want to distort the frame or the burlap by getting it too tight and then I did the same thing with the bottom corner and just attached it down now we have to find a way to get these bundles on and I'm decided that the stiffer floor wire would be the thing to use that is a, a stiffer one it's a heavy duty kind of a heavy duty wire so I make it like a bobby pin or a little hairpin put it right over the center and then just twist it up on the back and it will stay for as long as you need it to stay go on with the next one do the same thing we want to put it snugly next to the other one you can put it at an angle or you could turn it sideways whatever you want to do as long as you get them snugged in there together see I turned this one a little bit sideways you will have some freedom to move it around just a bit because we didn't use hot glue so that makes it a, a good way to keep your options open if you want to change this around a little bit so there are all the little pretty bunches on there and we're down to the bottom and you can begin arranging your little the little tubes of mesh and the bows and pull that wired ribbon out kind of curl it over your finger or bend the wires so that it flares out a little bit and separate the layers so that you can see each piece that you have there see that blue ribbon will stand up there for you nicely so I decided I wanted a little extra something in the center and I had these little pearl beads left over from Dollar Tree so I wanted to test them out and I think they're gonna look cute get your finger protectors on so you don't burn yourself so we're just gonna put one in the center of each one of those little bundles see just a little glue I want to fix it where I don't see the hole so it looks like an actual pearl in there and I have some of these little hearts that came from a pick from Dollar Tree in the Valentine section and I think I want to add those on there because those little llamas look like a cute little couple to me I thought two little hearts would be very cute I'm going to layer on a felt heart sticker. These also came from Dollar Tree. Just going to kind of put it, eyeball it in the center and just place that down. These are very flexible. They're fabric, so you can kind of mold them to the shape of what you have under them. I've gotten a lot of use out of this one bag of felt stickers, so it's worth your money for sure. Okay, so I decided I wanted to add a little extra something, so I'm just taking one little tube that's a 10 inch tube just rolled it up like with the others and then I'm gonna layer the ribbon on top this time I'm not using the metallic red twisting them together with a little floor wire dovetailing my ends so this is going to pull it together we're gonna to make the sides similar or at least coordinated we can say that much now this wire is gonna hold down your hearts and at some point, since they're not glued down, you can remove those hearts if you wanted to keep them up on your wall after Valentine's Day. Easy to remove. I love to recycle and use things over and over. It's the easiest way to stretch your dollar. There you go. What do you think? So cute. One last pearl to go on that bow and we're good to go. Seriously, this may be one of my favorite wreaths. I probably say that for all of them, but this is so darn cute. And it gives me so many ideas for options and possibilities of things that I want to do this spring. So be sure if you have not subscribed that you do subscribe. Handy dandy glue sticks. Gonna use some ribbon. There's two coordinating ones. I'll show you which one I use in a bit. They came from Dollar Tree. And these are some of the tower blocks from the toy section of Dollar Tree. 
This is a wedding bag. It came from just the wall that has all sorts of bags on it. It is matte on one side and the other side has a metallic gold. Sorry about this not being in focus. And then I'm just using the sign. Sometimes you can find them at Dollar Tree. I got mine from the thrift store. It's been used before for other projects. As you can see the, the marring there. It is 12 inches by 16 inches. So you can use anything you like for this. You can also use a piece of foam board and just cut it down to the right measurement. So I'm just showing you here, four inches and 12 inches is 16. All right, so we can use these ribbon hang uh, hanger handles again for another project so just take those out they have a little plastic thing on them and you can just feed that right back through those holes cut out around the edges of the picture i've already measured so i know how much i'm going to need just be careful with this i'm doing it in fast motion so you don't get bored with it but i was being quite careful about cutting this then you want to fold up cut off and remove the bulkiness from this top edge you're going to be gluing this down so you don't want all this extra bulk on the top. You want it to be as flush as possible. So just make that look neat, pull those pieces off and then trim it up. So I'm getting an idea here of where the picture will be by just folding and creasing a little bit. See, I can you can see the crease lines on there. And then I'm gonna apply the glue onto this chalkboard sign. Get good coverage, get all the way around it. You don't want there to be any lumps. You want it to be fairly even and be sure you get your corners and your edges nicely. If any little blobs come out, you can just rub that in with your hand because it will wash off very neatly. Okay, so we're gonna put that sign down on the bag, right back where those creases were. And I'm going to take this hanger off because this is from another project that was hanging in the other direction and we won't need these anymore. You can always paint or cover the back if you don't want it to show, but I wasn't bothered by it. It will be against the wall. No one will see it. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to use my wooden ruler here and start pressing the creases out. Now, the texture of the bag is not the same texture as like a calendar page. It's thicker and it almost has like a, I don't know. It's hard to explain. The texture of the bag is just different and it's a little bit thicker. So. Um, it's stronger, so that's a good thing. Whenever you get a lump or a bubble, just pull your edges up. If you use a glue stick, that's the beauty of it. You have time to work with it. Just going to press it down from the middle, press outward, and just um, make sure that you're getting that as smooth as possible or smooth as you can stand it. Some people don't mind the bubbles, and that's fine too. Whatever you want to do. I can fill it with my hands. I can see some of them. And in the end, it's not perfect, and I'm okay with that. But the ruler helps a lot, giving you a nice straight edge. Part of the problem is the surface that you're gluing something down to, if it's not completely flat or bowed in any way, it's gonna give you some little bubbles and some little bit of a problem, but just keep working with it. If you've got the patience, just put a little weight into it, just press those out. Now I'm gonna take my block here, my sanding block. I had to get a new block because it, the thickness of the paper didn't want to cut through as nicely as I would like. Um, not a problem. I had some nearby. So you're just going to file this away and downward and it's going to make you have a nice smooth finished looking edge. Okay, so here we go. It is glued down. It is sanded and if there are bubbles that remain, just keep working and pressing those down. I used Elmer's school stick. Uh, glue stick, but you can use Dollar Tree or whatever kind you like. I'm going to make a top and bottom border and I'm going to use these little blocks to do that. You're going to need to lay these out first to see where they go and then start gluing those down because I didn't pay close enough attention when I did it and it has more overhang on one side than the other. I could peel it off and redo it, but the point of the video is to give you inspiration so you do it the right way. Be sure that you do it the right way. And whatever makes you happy. You could go down the sides too, but I didn't have enough the size of this. There wasn't, um, they would have left a gap. So just the top and bottom. You could also paint these blocks with 
chalk paint or acrylic paint, you could spray paint them. You could use some type of a stain on those if you wanted to. Or you could just do like I did and just leave them the color that they are. See, it's a little longer on this side. I'm not sweating the small stuff. We don't sweat the small stuff around here, do we? No, we don't. But because it would drive me crazy if I had it even on the bottom and not on the top, I just went ahead and did the same thing on the bottom as I did the top. Use your finger protectors if you need to use them if you're a little sloppier with the glue. Be sure that you get your glue strings off because you're going to be using quite a bit of glue to put these down and they're going to be little spider webs everywhere most likely. I found some on mine even when the project was done. You'll see it on the end, but I did pick it off. After editing the video, I saw it and I got it. Okay. So there we go. There's our little border and it is fastly glued down. I have two different ribbons that I like. I can show you here that they both match the bag. So if you find this bag at Dollar Tree, you can find these ribbons. These are not in the spring section. They're just in the regular ribbon section. They're burlap and they are wired. I decided that the pink is the one that I wanted to use. We are going to make a little bow here. Simple little bow. Make a loop, then you're going to make the tail. I'm going to pinch the center of the tail, and then I'm going to pinch the top of the bow straight down onto that. That's what it will look like. Get a piece of jute or whatever you have to tie with. Any little scrap you have laying around would be okay too. I think this matched okay. So there we go. Tie a knot or two in there so that it doesn't come apart when you try to fluff it. Fluff them out so you can get an idea how it's going to look. Cut off little dovetails in the ends or you can cut them at a slant, whatever um, you prefer to do. And you can make the tails longer if you would like. You can keep them short like I have on mine. And there we go. Very, very simple bow. Cut your excess off. And then we're going to decide where we want to put this pretty little pink bow. And I think the center will be good for this one. Now we need to think about how we're going to hang it. And I'm going to use this wired jute to make a hanger for the back. So I'm going to decide where the middle is, kind of straighten it just a little bit. I'm going to turn it over, making sure that you're on the, the top, not the bottom. And this is how I make my little crafting band-aids, if you want to call it that. Just cut some scraps, put your glue down, put the end of your jute wire in there little more glue if you don't have enough and then you're just going to put your little piece of paper right over the top of that and it will hold it down nicely just like a band-aid see there then do the same thing on the other side and you're good to go now we have our hanger we're going to place our perfect little simple bow here I think the bow is appropriate because it doesn't take away from the gorgeous picture so put that in the middle. And there you go. There is your Valentine or spring or wedding or little girl's room, whatever you want to call it, sign. I think it's very pretty and I, I like the pastels and I love the blue background. Gold is not usually my thing, but I, I think it looks really nice with this. What do you think? Thanks for, so much for coming over here and watching my videos. I appreciate every one of you. Subscribe if you like budget-friendly videos. 
and I'll see you again soon. Bye.